Hafede told Assembly this informational briefing by the Committee on Innovation, Economic, Workforce, and Youth Development is now called to order. It is now 2.38 p.m. For the record, public notice was sent on Friday, November 10th, 2017, in accordance um, Sorry, in addition, this public hearing was noticed on the legislature's website, guamlegislature.com. Written testimonies may be submitted by emailing Senator Bisco Lee at guamlegislature.org, or you may hand deliver it to our office at 163 Chalan Santo Papa here in Hagatnya. Joining me here this afternoon is Sen Senator Joe San Augustine, and I'd like to thank him so much for joining me. On the agenda, ladies and gentlemen, will be the informational briefing by the Office of Technology and updates on the ongoing work of the Office of Technology, um, especially with re regards to the satellite location for the Department of Revenue and Taxation regarding customer service improvements and innovation. Um, there was a briefing that was um, oh, this will be a briefing on a written report that was requested by myself and the committee that OTEC has provided for us. Um, we'll also be discussing digital security measures employed by DRT in consultation with OTEC when handling personally identifiable information for both taxation and DMV processes. And at this time, I'd like to just acknowledge those who've signed in. Um, Ryan Calvo, John Camacho with DRT, Frank Lujan Jr. with OTEC, and Joseph Manabusin. So um, I'd like to call on Mr. Frank Lujan, our Chief Technology Officer, the Office of Technology, to please come forward, be seated. And I want to thank you all for taking the time to come down to the legislature and participate in this informational briefing. I think we're all really eager to hear about the great work that Oak Tech has put into securing a satellite location for DRT at the Aganya Shopping Center, as well as the technology improvements that are being employed to provide a better customer service experience to all our constituents. And if you would just introduce yourself for the record and we can move on to some questions. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chairman, uh, Senator uh, St. Augustine. Um, thank you for uh, the opportunity to actually testify and provide this informational briefing. Uh, my name is Frank Lujan. I'm the, actual, the Chief Technology Officer for the Governor of Guam under the Office of Technology. And what I'd like to do is go ahead and just uh, provide, uh, just read off my written uh, report to, to you. And uh, partially my strategy is to uh, address any questions you might have in, in, in moving forward. So um, this is, actually I call this the Driver's License Satellite Real ID Informational Report. And on the abstract, I'd say in, in FY, 17 of the, the fourth quarter, OTEC engaged in an initiative with DRT to come up with a solution to help relieve some of the issues with the long wait lines at the main DRT office. This is a short informational and vision report from the Office of Technology. A Real ID, passed by Congress in 2005, the Real ID Act enacted the 9-11 Commission's recommendation that the federal government set standards for the issuance of sources of identification, such as driver's licenses. The act established minimum security standards for state-issued driver's license and identification cards and prohibits federal agencies from accepting for official purpose, purposes licenses and identification cards from states that do not meet these standards. States have made considerable progress in meeting this key recommendation of the 9-11 Commission, and every state has a more secure driver's license today than before the passage of the Act. The scope of this report is limited to providing a brief set of informational discussion points related to the recent planning of a new driver's license satellite office location within the capital city of Hagatnya, Guam, and the Office of Technology's role in assisting the Department of Revenue and Taxation in achieving compliance with the Real ID Act as DRT transitions to the new location. OTEC's role 
The Office of Technology has been working in partnership with the Department of Revenue and Taxation with implementing the technologies and business processes needed to forge through, the drive, forge through and drive towards compliance for the last few years. OTEC's responsibilities include securing the databases, assuring availability of the systems, and managing, managing this complex project to help in assuring success. There have been weekly project status meetings, which include stakeholders from OTEC, DRT, and various vendors. The security of the databases and the business processes are layered amongst various third-party agencies working in conjunction with OTEC's overall network security currently in place. The various agencies signing off on certification compliance include the Department of Homeland Security, the IRS through the IRS 1075 compliance, and what's called the SSR cap. And SSR stands for the uh, safety security report that uh, the IRS actually comes up with. And CAP stands for the Corrective Action Plan. So that is ongoing. Uh, that's something that is active. It's an active document that uh, IRS uh, works with uh, DRT on. And we, we are an integral part of uh, providing the feedback for that report. Uh, the Social Security Administration is always uh, or is also included in, in the vetting process. So we have to adhere by their security requirements as well as the American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators, called AMVA. So all these four uh, third-party agencies are actually involved in assessing our readiness in terms of security. The additional local layers uh, within OTEC includes our firewall that covers the Governor Guam wide area network, as well as the um, Department of Homeland Security's hybrid or cyber hygiene report, which we get on a weekly basis. In addition to that, we actually have physical sensors that are monitored on a 24/7 uh, basis, internal, uh, internal within our our network. Um, this is actually monitored by a security operations center um, under the Center of Internet Security. So we do get um, tickets that we react to whenever there are intrusions or detections of um, uh, any penetrations within our network. Uh, this next subject really speaks more to the vision um, called Mobile DL. Uh, in line with OTEC's ongoing modernization vision, AMVA has published a video demonstrating the mobile DL operational proof of concept that was done in collaboration with the RDW, DMV of the Netherlands. This video illustrates how mobile DL technology could work and present situations in which technology could be used. Um, I leave a reference here. The video link can be found at uh, https colon backslash backslash YouTube dot be backslash c f o s v m a b b a e and that that link is provided in in my report you can re can review that at your your leisure uh, this particular video actually uh, is is a great vision of how we can consider moving the driver's license technology actually into our smartphones and, and usually using that data for more uh, innovative purposes. Another concept we're working on uh, called uh, under the subject of queuing customer flow uh, solutions, this is geared more into uh, improving the experience of long lines. So, OTEC is currently working on a solution to improve the driver's license renewal vetting experience through leveraging sign-in kiosks, digital signage, the internet, and smartphone technology to help customers manage their wait time and give them more control of their time. This is a pi pilot project that is in the procurement process at this time with GSA and DRT. Um, also in my report, I have a compliance chart for your review, and I'm sorry we don't, I, you know, you, you have that in front of you, but basically 
In this chart, there's a map of the United States, and uh, it delineates the status of the various 56 states and territories uh, within compliance. Uh, the green are the states that uh, delineate compliance. The yellow are the states that have been granted an extension. And the blue are states that are under uh, review. Now, uh, by this particular uh, diagram, you can see things, states as the state of New York, Michigan, Illinois, Missouri, as well as uh, Louisiana are still under review and they, basically they're in the same status as Guam. Um, none of the other territories are in compliance and they are also under review. So we're basically at the same status. The following link, uh, https colon backslash backslash uh, www.dhs.gov backslash real dash ID backslash Guam is the link that shows the enforcement status that uh, Guam currently is at. And I believe our extension actually has been granted to uh, April of uh, 2018 and we're just waiting for uh, uh, confirmation, April 30th, yes. We're waiting for confirmation, official confirmation. And as soon as that comes up, then that will actually be um, expressed on the website. Um, this last part of my report shows a proposed floor plan. Um, and uh, I, you know, I submit this as part of my uh, testimony. And I'm now open to any questions you might have. Sisters Masi, Mr. Luhan. Thank you for the brief. Um, one of the questions that I had was maybe you can elaborate on what systems um, OTEC used to develop in collaboration with DRT um, to ensure that the satellite office is able to communicate with DRT. Can you maybe elaborate on some of the systems that you used? Well, actually, it will be connected once the, the circuits are, are procured. We're, uh, right now, we're currently tracking towards a December 1st opening date, but uh, physically, it'll be a, a, what we call a dark fiber link that's attached to um, our data center in, in Aganya. Now, from there, there is actually a hub that connects another uh, set of fibers that, high-speed fibers that actually go out to the DRT uh, location. So um, we're anticipating that all those configurations will actually be seamless once we provision all of the, uh, all of the devices. Uh, the, the satellite will operate as if it were in Barragata Heights. Thank you very much. I know you can't go into great detail, but maybe if you could just explain, maybe give us an overview, overview on what um, digital security measures are taken by DRT um, when handling personal, personally identifiable information for both taxation and DMV processes. And maybe you can answer that or maybe the director can answer that for us. Well, there, there are actually a number of technologies that we are using in security. Uh, the first part is to actually um, there's processes where these agencies have to assure that we, in, our, in terms of our business processes, we are not, uh, they're not experiencing any kind of leakage in data. In other words, there's no exposures to where somebody can inadvertently tap into to the data itself. So we do have to prove that all out, and, and that has been an ongoing process. We recently launched uh, last month a, a new release of the, the vendor's software that uh, controls the real ID and that allowed us to go into now testing for a lot of the facial ret recognition, the, bio, uh, the biometrics that we need to employ in, in verifying and validating who um, the people who are applying for these driver's licenses are. Now, but in terms of security, we cannot, you know, Department of Homeland Security would not grant us uh, any kind of compliance statuses if we weren't moving towards that, uh, securing that data. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Dohan. Um, I think we can all agree that technology can really be adapted to solve many of the problems that are plaguing, plaguing DRT. Um, I wanted to ask you, what solutions is OTEC considering to modernize how um, constituents in our community are able to apply for a license? Well, the, there's different ways of uh, moving forward with that, and uh, part of it has to do with adhering to the modernization standards that actually ANVA puts out. Um, uh, my understanding of how the workflow is, and, and John, you, if you can maybe elaborate a little bit on that, uh, I can I can kind of supplement that. Yes, uh, I guess, uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, Senator San Augustine. Um, yeah, I guess some of the things that we were looking at, uh, which we have um, basically, you know, um, to cut down the waiting time is, is our online um, uh, signage for for um, uh, setting up an appointment and giving every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes. So we're dedicating dedicating one one uh, cubicle for that, uh, and I think we're we're also doing one for um, the Aganya Shopping Center. So those are things that we we want to do. I I'm not too sure we we're allowed to because of this uh, Real ID Act. If we're allowed to do something online to make it more convenient, we're, we're looking into that also to see what we can do. I, you know, in other areas in our department, we have a lot of those online that makes it convenient for the taxpayers. So that's one area that um, after we complete this Real ID Act, uh, you know, on April 30, we're gonna look into that and see what we can do to, to make it more convenient for the taxpayers of Guam. Thank you very much, Director DeQuancho. Um and I think in line with some of your responses, I, I wanted to ask, will the improvements that OTEC and Department of Revenue and Taxation, um, will, what, they're, what you're implementing now will help, will those improvements help Guam to become compliant, 100% compliant in real ID? Yes, uh, that is correct. Uh, we, we just uh, asked for an additional extension. Uh, like. Uh, uh, Frank said earlier, uh, we have until April 30 next year to be compliant. We have been, uh, I guess, assured that uh, the, uh, the extension has been, been granted, but we're waiting for an official word from HSS. So uh, these things that we're doing basically is, is uh, leading towards full compliance with the Real ID Act. And uh, hopefully, you know, we, by that time, we should be able to get it. Okay. Um, we've heard from a number of constituents in my office. I'm sure that Senator San Augustine have had, has had a lot of calls and even just people that we bump into in the public. So I guess if I was a person who recently stood in line for many hours at DRT and was able to get my driver's license, let's say a week ago, would that be real ID compliant or would I have to come back um, after April 30 of next year and reapply? Uh what what we've been doing uh, basically, if, if if we if the person who renewed um, the the driver's license or obtained a, a driver's license from from our department, basically, if if they have gone to the the vetting process, which means that we we uh, scan all their records that are required under the Guam Reality, the Social Security birth certificate, and and the uh, residency uh, verification. We won't do that anymore for that particular uh, person, but unless the person's status changed, then we'll probably ask uh, if the person remarried or you know those things. But uh, yes, uh, we, we won't go to that process. We're looking at basically looking at the law. What, what can we do with these taxpayers that have complied? Uh, and after, the, after we have met the Real ID compliance by April 30, we're looking at you know, getting these people to to actually either come in or, or work with them to get their real ID uh, driver's license. Thank you very much. And at this time, I have a couple more questions, but I wanted to um, yield the floor to my colleague. Thank you, Madam Chair. Very simple questions. Number one, um, the Real ID Act started in 2005. When did OTEC get involved? Mr. Long. Well, I've been involved since I came on board in 2015, but uh, okay. the office, uh, 
I believe, started out since it was under the Bureau of uh, Information Technology. And so um, it started back then in assessing a lot of the different technologies and, and uh, the, the needs for, for integration. So it, it's been a long process. We've been involved since. No, since, no I since understand that. But 2015, it's 2017 today, Frank and um, Mr. Hahn. And my concern is that two years, when was the vendor picked up for the real ID? When was this real ID really a vendor picked up to start this program? What I'm trying to lead to is the number one. A lot of the data that you're talking about that Mr. Camacho brought up to make copies of birth certificates, social security, that's all was seen already by driver's license folks. And if you want to use the word vetting, you're referring to somebody validating that the driver's license, the, the, the birth certificate was brought in, like for me 40 years ago, or like yourself, Frank, and, and even John, and even you. Um, this was done many years ago. Social Security card was brought in. My birth certificate was brought in. Uh, all the data that I needed to get a driver's license back then was brought in. And, and, and to say now, because of the Real ID Act, um, you need to bring it in, bring it in again. Mm, I'm not very comfortable with that. And a lot of the people, people in Guam are not comfortable with that because why? A lot of them, if you remember correctly, way back, they used to give Social Security card, nice paper, right? And then people get the gold card or they'll get the, they'll laminate their social security card. And it's, and it's, you can't do that. But see, they have to go and get in line now at the social security office and hope to get a social security card and then present it again. The numbers don't change. You know, social security card is, number is only given one time. It's like your fingerprint. It doesn't change. So I'm only concerned is that when, when OTEC got involved, um, cause remember it started in 05 and I, I, I know that because Mr. Camacho has been talking about this with Marie Benito on, on many occasions. I'm just concerned that when, whoever the vendor is today, is there a mechanism in place so that the vendor can start looking at the data that was already there and then migrate it so that through your, your vetting process, let them bring it in, they take a look at it. If they need to make a copy, maybe have another window to scan it because it's the same person. I mean, when Mr. Camacho signs up for his driver's license, Still John Camacho, still the same social security number, still the same birth, birth date. The only thing probably changed is not in Iran no more, he's in Zico. I mean, that's the only difference, but you're still on Guam. And I'm only concerned that the people of Guam are, are running around getting uh, mayor's certification. Some of them just moved to Zico and they're getting one today and then they, and they're only running and then tomorrow they'll be in Timuni. And I'm just concerned is that in the States, I can understand if you're living in Orange County, and then you move to Sacramento, of course, you need to change. But in the States, their driver's license are a lot, the, the, you know, their term is a lot longer than Guam. And they don't have to change it. They can keep claiming, I'm in Orange County, but they're not, they're in Sacramento. Driver's license will still be the same. That's what, and that's what concerns me is that um, some of the requirements that probably the Real ID Act asked for may not be reasonable for Guam because Guam's too small. Everybody talks about that in the mainland all the time. And then the information that you already have on the, on the database, you know, for you on the OTEC, you're trying to figure out, okay, you guys have to do this as a requirement, but there should have been a better mechanism in place. And then the next one is that I'm looking at this sketch, and you know, I brought this up since the day I got elected, and I brought it up with Mr. Camacho and even Ms. Benito and the driver license folks that you've got one down at the Ghani Shopping Center. What is this costing the government of Guam? What is costing the people of Guam? To have this location, I'm just curious, do you know what the cost is, uh, Mr. Lohan or Mr. Camacho? What is it going to cost the government of Guam to have eight locations, it identifies eight, to move the cashier down there, all the equipment, and right now it's only out that it's, it's temporary for a year. Not very comfortable with that because I know my colleagues will be like, wait a minute, this is not, nothing is temporary. Everything that they say is temporary is actually almost permanent here in Guam. You know, oh, we're going to temporarily put you there, but you're almost there for life. And I'm just concerned that I brought it up that public health has a space. Mr. Gillum told me that. I know there's space at the mall, and I know that Mr. Camacho brought up that, you know, it's too close to, to a burger ice. Well, if, once they move, then they'll be far. And then the allocation in Central. And I'm just trying to understand how a Guyanese shopping center got caught in this 
and your major population is from Tumuning up north. I'm just trying, I, I, don't, I don't know if you have an answer to that, Frank. M maybe John does, but do you have an answer to that on what it's going to cost? Or what is it going to cost the government today? I don't have any exact costs uh, okay. right now. I, I provided some quotes for equipment mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, but I don't have the, you know, the consolidated uh, okay. figures. And, and, the, and the only reason why I'm leading that on is because I know that my colleague and I just, what, a couple of months ago, we passed the, the budget. The governor was reluctant in it, but we passed the budget, and it funded the Department of Revenue and Tax to hire more people so they can actually go get more money. And if, and if the department is going to be taking out a hide for this, I just hate to see, you know, Mr. Camacho trying to get more money and he's it's just escaping in the back door and he's trying to get his agency to bring more money in for the government. I'm just very curious, what is the cost? Of, do you know what the cost is, Mr. Camacho? I, I don't have the cost with me right now, but um, going, going back to the issue of location, I think we, we visited uh, the Micronesia Mall and also GPO. And I think there, there was nothing available uh, on those two locations. That's why we ended up with, with a Ghana uh, shopping center. And, um, okay. And uh, it, it's temporary now, but um, the, the six that, that basically was given to us is, is part of these, you know, future for the driver's license we're going to be hiring. I think we're, we're getting it to DOA already. Uh, that's going to be part of it too, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that we're going to extend that, you know, that agreement for, uh, you know, another year or so. But, but I, I guess the bottom line is that uh, it, the governor saw that there's, there's really a need to get more resources. I mean, people were, were complaining, lining up two, three hours just to get a driver's license. So that was the, the, the thing that we did. You know, the governor said, look at this, let's find a place. We did find the place, and we're working on that. And Frank and, and, and my deputy Maria has been working throughout the months since then, trying to get that thing uh, ready for December 1st. So uh, right now, once the real ID is completed, uh, this, you know, this probably could be maybe some shift. You know, maybe just we will take a look at it. Maybe we can open it for vehicle registrations. I think you mentioned earlier that we have uh, some properties that are available up in in uh, the back road, yes. maybe something that we can do. But as far as the need, I, I think the need is always there. I, I, I believe, uh, you know, the people of Guam needs, you know, the services and, and, you know, by getting eight additional cubicles and entertaining eight more additional to the eight, 16, it's really going to help, you know, and, and that's something that we, we wanted really to do. And I don't have the exact cost, but it's, it's costing us some money to get those equipment in and, and on all these things. But, okay, so but the bottom line is mm -hmm. that, you know, the, you know, the people who um, you know, deserve something, you know, and if, if it's going to, you know, spread out the, the, the section and it's going to cut the line down from two hours to an hour, you know, it, it's going to help. No, no, and, and I look forward to that, Mr. Camacho. I, I was only concerned about the cost and the, and the reason why the cost is because when you take a look at that cost, then let's take a look at if you double the effort, and you know, it just starts ex you start expanding the business, the, the agency, because it's about bringing the, 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 the government of Guam service to the people. It's not about the people coming to the government of Guam for service. So it's got to change. It's got to change. It's got to change soon. Because in the two hours you mentioned, I stood in line for three hours in November. And I'm just concerned. And my wife stood in line in December for three hours. I stood in line for her. But... I'm just concerned, and there's many other folks that still in line for five or six hours. Unacceptable. I mean, I honestly believe that's very unacceptable. Three hours, we managed with that. Remember, John, I, I was working in Remtax, so I can understand that three hours. But I'm concerned is that you've got, I looked at your photo, and you've got a printing, you've got a driver license printing here. It's right in the middle next to the Treasurer of Guam on your layout. At Revenue and Tax today, there is a printing station, right? If you look at the station, it's right there in the corner of the left. But what's ironic is that everybody that gets entertained, they get a photo taken, because I had a photo taken, but I had to get another photo taken at the, at the printing station. I'm just curious as how is this setup going to be? Is the technology that you're bringing in or that's coming in is going to make sure that when they walk into any of these stations, when an individual walks in, he gives all his paper, goes through all the vetting, they take a picture, they just tell him, go have a seat outside, and they call his name to give him his driver's license, not call him to say, have a seat, and let's take another picture. Because that's 
what the practice has been. And I'm just concerned is that we're saying maybe reduce to one hour. It may, all we did was shift the location of the hour that you're going to stay, the three, two or three hours. And I hate, I hate to give the, the, the impression to the people of Guam that, yeah, we shifted to the Ghani Shopping Center. But all we did was we took you to another location to stay three or four or five or six hours. Nothing changed. It's got to it's gotta be for the best, not for the worst. Okay, Senator. Well, to, to, uh, Senator, to clarify, um, in these processing stations, uh, each one of them are outfitted with a, with a camera, so the pictures will be done in those processing stations. Uh, they will then be given um, a receipt to go to the cashiers, pay for it. And there, if you look at the diagram, there's a place called the DL Printing, which is right next, next to it. They will stand there, verify their information, including their picture, and once they verify that, it'll be printed, issued there, right there in the spot, and then they, they can leave. So it's, we've designed the workflow to be as, as efficient as, as could be in, in the space that we and have. And as friendly as possible, right? And as friendly as possible. <laughs> All right, thank you. And to kind of go back to also your, your concerns about um, the data that has been previously captured, uh, a lot of that data is what's called, they're actually in what's called an analog state, where they're in manual files. They're not in any kind of digital form. So for Revintax to actually use that information, um, they would have to go back into their archives to pull that information out and individually yeah. verify yeah. Are you referring to pulling out the piece of paper that they, that they showed? Because if I know for a fact, remember I worked at Riven and Tax for several years. You pull up AS400, you can see, I and mean, you put driver license, everything is typed in. I mean, it's not, uh, I don't see the scan document of Social Security, but I'm just saying the information is there. I can see somebody like yourself walking and says, I'm here to get vetted, my Social Security is the same, Here's my card. There was Xerox it, and you know, like you said, right? Make a copy. I can understand that, right. but I just don't see if that's really there that the individual is going to be walking around. I mean, there, there's even an authorized a requirement that you bring in your 1099 or your W-2. Yeah. It has a social security number. Yeah, it's no and, different. And you're, than social you're right. There, there is a lot of information on the on the S-400. Yeah. The only challenge is that with these requirements. Uh, these veteran requirements, they require the actual source of document. So that's why um, there's requirements that they actually bring in the actual uh, social security certificate and that kind of, and those documents are actually digitally scanned and they're actually stored. And so they're all grouped into the database so that, that um, everything is validated and verified. Even to the extent of uh, uh, when I talk to you about the, bi uh, the biometrics that we'll be implementing, it includes facial recognition to to okay. verify uh, you are in fact who you are, and it <laughs> all matches person. up with everything. So, so that's how integrated the technologies will would, be. Would the system also be set up like on some states where you can mm -hmm. actually, um, I, go, I guess, go online and you can you can actually renew your driver's license, and it go right through once this real ID act is in place, Absolutely. where you don't have to. In fact, you know, yeah, the, the, mis California, the misnomer here is that you will go back every time you want to renew. No, this is the first time. Right. Uh, it's kind of like uh, if you just get your driver's license for the first time, you have to go through a process. Once, you, once you're done with that process, unless, as uh, uh, Director Camacho alluded to, unless there's changes, in other words, you moved from Tamuning to Dedido, then you don't need to actually go through the whole vetting process again. You can be okay. uh, issued, and part of our vision is to issue those things online. Once you, once you apply for it, uh, you, you, it's conceivable that you're, okay. you've got a real ID. You that, can, we can one, send it's, it. It's one shot. One shot, you can either okay. send it or pick it up. Okay, and, and the other questions, I, I only have one more question. There are other laws that were passed that had talked about driver's license, the veterans to be identified that you're a veteran? Sure. Is, is that ready in place? Is, is that going to happen? I mean, because you, you, I'll take now you're involved now, so I'm going to lean towards you more than, than John. John be like, Frank, you answer it. it it's about <laughs> putting it on the driver's license. And you know, really, because that law was passed, um, Real ID became more, more, inf more implemented, I guess, this year. But it was last year that Senator Ogun and Senator Tom Atta introduced that bill 
to, and it was passed that they, they have the veterans identifying the driver license because a lot of veterans take that, you know, they're very proud of that. And in the, in the mainland, when they get, when you get pulled over by a police officer, they look at your veteran, the first thing they do is a little bit more calm of you, you know, <laughs> kind of like, but I'm just concerned is that, is that going to be implemented? Well, I, the way this works is uh, DRT is our partner. Right. So I verify that, yes, the technology is there to do it. Uh, Director Camacho verified the policies in place to do it, so I'll, I'll let him answer that. Yeah, I, I guess in our, our uh, oversight hearing or information hearing, like right. I did mention that, that it's, it's going to be part of it. Okay. I just want to make sure I, I ask the old tech guys, so, so when something slips in, John, I can say, well, Frank said he's good to go. And, and I, th I think that's, that, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a couple of additional questions um, for the both of you. So actually, Director Camacho, right now at DRT, what is your capacity? Like how, how many people do you see on a given day, give or take? I, I believe we, we did a, an analysis. I think the, the average per, per day um, that we process is about 200. 200 driver's licenses, that's, that's something that we, we looked at. Okay, and um, maybe Director Luhan could help us kind of work through how many people you might be able to see at a given time. Like what's your capacity at ASC that you're anticipating? Well, the, the capacity can, is really related to the demand and Really, the demand in any, any given month has to do with uh, um, which driver's license have to be renewed. So when you have a population of over 40,000 driver's license, that's, you know, that's not necessarily evenly spread out through each one of the months. So it just depends on the demand. And that's why you see a lot of the lines, because all of them have to, if they choose to go through the vetting process, then they, they essentially have to stand in line. But what we've tried to do is that, um, the, in terms of the technology that's in place, it's as, it's as fast as vetting can be. Uh, my understanding is uh, no one uh, process is taking more than 20 minutes uh, to go through. And that's still pretty fast. And, to get and in you and have out. eight, um, as you outlined in your, your um proposed floor plan, there are eight different processing stations right. at the, the proposed Agania Shopping Center site. Yes. Okay. Um, also, uh, Senator San Augustine had mentioned the DL driver's license printing and then right next door is the cashier, the t uh, treasurer of Guam. And so my question was, is this treasurer of Guam for driver's licenses only, or is yes. it for all treasurer of Guam transactions? At, at this time, initially, we, uh, our plan is to monitor it. And um, because basically, <laughs> one of the fears we have is if we open it up to all payments, uh, then we're going to be back down to the line. So we're going to limit it right now to just the driver's license processing piece. And, and until we see how that is behaving, how that workflow is, then um, we'll, we'll make the decision to, to uh, you know, uh, expand upon that, if you will. Thank uh, you. In addition, uh, in your brief, you discussed um, queuing and customer flow solutions. And you talked about a pilot project that's in procurement process at this time between GSA and Department of Revenue and Tax. Do you have correct. a timeline for that? Well, um, it's conceivable that we could actually have this, the, the, the whole solution in place by the January, February time frame. Okay, great. And you were mentioning um, that you're shooting for a December 1st opening at Agani Shopping Center. That's correct. Okay. Um, in addition to those questions, I guess, Director Camacho, I had um, just a, qu a couple questions for you. I know that you recently may have hired um, a couple more full-time employees at Department of Revenue and Tax? Uh, yes, that's the, um, in anticipation for those uh, eight cubicles that we're, we're looking at. And, and um, we're, we're training them right now. Uh, of, you know, we, we need to, you know, get these uh, eight additional uh, staff to, to house. We're probably looking at four, four experienced, uh, you know, driver's license there and then send four new ones so okay. they can, It'll be monitored, so, but we're, we're going to that process right now, but 
I just wanted uh, to ask uh, that question about you know uh, the treasure of Guam. I think we we're still looking at the possibility of of each um, uh, driver's license uh, uh, examiner one basically to try and receive some kind of payment. Uh, it's just a bonding issue that we, we we've been looking at. It's gonna you know. I feel that when the person comes in and, and if he has a credit card or, or a check, you know, we can just do everything one day, one time. You know, it, it's, it's more convenient than to try and get up again. And, and, but that's something that we have to work with with Department of uh, Administration because bonding is an issue. Uh, but I think in the long run, uh, that's always been the goal that we wanted to, to give the taxpayer that convenience that when you sit in that room, and we have that credit card machine there, or a check, maybe not cash. If we have cash, maybe go line up at Treasure Guam. But we just need to try and get that thing. Um, that's, that's, that was the plan when we started, but uh, hopefully that later on we, we can look into that and make it more convenient for, for, the, for the, the, the taxpayers. Right, and I, I can understand what uh, Mr. Luhan was saying. You know, initially we have to kind of gauge what the flow is and the capacity, but you know, if it, if it turns out maybe what we can do is prioritize the d driver's licenses and those will be processed first, mm -hmm. but if there's time for the Treasurer of Guam to also accept other payments, then maybe we can do it at that, at that point. One other suggestion that I had um, is, and I'm not sure what your staffing pattern looks like, but if you have room, an additional person, um, maybe at the Barragata location, if you could maybe consider having somebody there to act as a concierge or like a information booth type of person because I know a lot of constituents have come to me and just complained about waiting in line for several hours only to get to the front of the line and they're in the wrong line or they don't have the proper documents and it's extremely frustrating for individuals to have to wait all of that time just to be turned away and to have to go back and, and um, go to, you know, maybe it's public health or their mayor's office for verification and then have to come back and wait in that line again. So if it, if at all possible, if you could maybe take a look at your staffing pattern, and that, again, this is just a suggestion, but I think it would be really helpful for us as, you know, as, as servants and, and providing that customer service to our constituents that we have somebody there who can answer very simple questions. Yes, ma'am, you're here to renew your driver's license. Um, just want to make sure that you have these five things on our checklist line up right over here. If they have questions about business licenses or just somebody who's knowledgeable of your processes, I think it'll also help, you know, the flow. And when people get to the front of the line, they know that they're going to be served. They know that they're going to get what they're get what they came for and, and be out of your hair. So I think that's just something that I wanted to bring up in, in hopes that you'd consider that. Yeah, yeah yes, uh, we'll, we'll look into that. All. And then I, I think uh, at one time we had a monitor there that, you know, you know while, while you're lining up, it tells you all the requirements. But I think we're, we're, we're trying to look into that also, giving, give, getting a monitor and getting all the, the list that you need when, yes. you know, in order be, before you line up. Are you yes. ready? You need this, you need this, mm -hmm. and you need this. So that's something that we're looking at also. Even so, better if, if those things could be made available online. You know, if somebody go, goes on the revenue and tax website and says, okay, I'm here to renew a driver's license or I'm here to apply for a business license. Here's the checklist of all the things that you need. And I know that there are some things available online, but if we could get all of those available, I think we can really save ourselves a lot of headache and, uh, and our constituents a lot of time and, and money, frankly. Yeah, I, I think those are already online, uh, Madam Chair. Those, those applications and requirements, they're online already. It's just okay, a I think there people. might be yeah. some things yeah. that are not yet available yes. online. And we can but talk we'll, about that yeah. offline, but yes, thank yes. you. And I really want to thank um, Senator St. Augustine for taking the time out to be here today. I know that there will be many of people who will be viewing this online and um, on, our, on our legislative channel. So I want to thank you for taking the time. I know you're very hardworking and everybody here is, um, you know, really busy schedules. But I think that this is something that a lot of people in our community have expressed, you know, some hemming and hawing over. And, and it's really important to, that we iron out the kinks and really looking forward to having an efficient and and productive process come December 1st. So again, I want to thank you so much for taking the initiative to, 
you know, think outside the box and create this additional satellite location, and we hope that everything goes well. We'll also be looking forward to the cost, um, and maybe hopefully you can get that information back to us. But again, I just wanted to um, say thank you so much. This informational briefing um, is now adjourned. The time is now 3. 23 p.m. And individuals who wish to submit testimony will have um, 10 days from today to do so by emailing it to Senator Bisco Lee at guamlegislature.org or you may hand deliver it to our office here at 163 Chalen Santo Papa here in Hagania. Again, Suzu Masi.